All right, we got another <laughs> guest coming in. He's not a guest. He's a homeboy. Uh, let's make sure. Is, does he look good Head on camera? Honcho. Does he look good on camera? He's a little taller than Steve was <laughs> there in the middle. We don't have it. There he is. There he is. He's looking good. It's Vaughn Wilson. What's up, bro? FAMU's finest. <laughs> all of, all, Amer all American punter. Uh, I don't know if he was all American. He was really good. Were you all American? You were all with twice. <laughs> Don't play. Don't Sheridan. play with Vaughn. Not to play three. Don't Sheridan. play. Don't play with Vaughn. <laughs> but he covers all things Florida for us at HBCU Game Day. We talk all the time. Mm -hmm. We don't ever get to see each other. I know it's <laughs> just amazing. I just uh, when Stephen came down for the SWAC championship, I was like excited because we we work together, but we just never get to see each other. All right, we uh, we were virtual before COVID. We <laughs> we set right. the stage for all all things virtual. Um, but it's. It's kind of a full circle thing. When Coach Willie Simmons got to FAMU, there's no secret. The field house was not in good shape. The field was not in good shape. The program itself was not in good shape. John Eason, Dr. John Eason, who was the athletic director, he's like, I'm going to forego this committee thing that y'all do to pick coaches. I'm going to pick my coach. I got my guy. And you talk about that seven to ten days, he took no time. He literally went and interviewed one coach. He knew who he wanted. He knew that Coach Simmons was the guy for here. And it goes back to, he told us, finally told us, that it goes back to when John Eason was coaching a, an assistant coach at the University of Georgia and Willie was the quarterback at Clemson. And <laughs> Clemson, uh, Willie had that offense so potent as quarterback that Georgia had to go for a fourth down that really was controversial, but they barely made it. And so we, they didn't want to give the ball back. They didn't want to give it back to Simmons. He says we knew. Uh, Mark Rick said we could not stop him um, going from going back down the field. So their relationship started there, and he kind of kept an eye on Willie, and he knew that he was the guy from the area that understood the family traditions. Uh, he was a smart guy. Got recommendations from every coach that he had worked with. Uh, that said, yes, you we, and 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 and, and uh, we hate to lose him, but yes, he is a, a a great guy. And so, with that with that energy, the alumni and the boosters have jumped in like they never have before. The field house got redone. The turf field was added. The stadium on both sides was redone. Brand new jumbotron, brand new sound system, nutrition station. For a football team, and now after last year, the with, with the embarrassment of year before last, there are twelve people working in the academics and compliance department. Oh, and everybody wasn't uh, cleared cleared for yep. that Carolina well, game because there was one person doing all of those jobs. So <laughs> that doesn't work well. If anybody knows, you got a hundred something right. guys to keep track of. That doesn't work. It's yeah. always going to be a recipe. So while Coach Simmons has continued to escalate the team by winning, it has drawn support. And this is something that HBCUs have to understand. Willie Simmons probably could not win on that field, in that field house, with no nutrition station, without the kids being able to go to summer school. In the HBCU realm, we have to understand you get what you invest in. And what we're seeing now is a great, a huge investment by the boosters, alumni, the administration. And I see family working on one accord like I haven't seen maybe ever. And then, you know, even as a player, you, you say you're tunnel vision to that field, but when you come off the field, you're looking around and seeing what's going on. And last year at the Celebration Bowl, I was just really amazed at the number of HBCUs that are here wearing their gear, um, just every HBCU. And it was just amazing. It's just, you know, there are a lot of people that says HBCUs should prepare to be in the FCS playoffs. Why? Why do we need the FCS playoffs to validate us? We're validating ourselves. The FCS playoffs, well, I've been to the comment. Keep talking, let me check the I've, comments. I've, I've, I've been to the FCS playoffs games. They're dry. <laughs> There's nobody at the games. Say it again. There's Try. no concerts and parties around it. None of that. And you don't make any money. Mm -hmm. The schools decided 
um, and, and the schools, the chancellors and presidents, are they actually direct the conference. You have commissioners, but the decisions really are made by the presidents and chancellors. And they decided we would like to have our own championship in Division One, bring money to our schools, bring a platform of unprecedented publicity to, to promote these schools. Let's just say this. For a few years, North Carolina A&T was the number one public HBCU. What does that align with? Tariq Cohen, Rod Broadway, amazing celebration bowls. When that went down, they left and went conferences, left conferences with the rise that FAMU was already on their tail. But it shot past North Carolina a t So when people tell me sports aren't important, look at how those line up. Look at how North Carolina a and academic profile was at its height when their football team and their athletic departments were doing well. Uh-oh, data. Now, data. Florida A&M, academics, recruiting top students, it's like 4.0 almost to get in FAMU now. But their athletic teams have achieved, particularly football. We're not going to sugarcoat it, particularly football. Volleyball. Volleyball. <laughs> Cross country, golf team. These things are what attract students. Mm -hmm. So for all of those presidents and chancellors out there at HBCUs that think you're bigger than the football coach, be the president. But you need to support your football coach because they're, they're some of your best recruiters. Yep. Speak on it. We need to pass the plate. <laughs> uh -oh. no, I, I knew it got I real when he got that hand up. <laughs> I don't like to see presidents go, oh, athletics over there. I really, y'all gave me the mic now. <laughs> I really think some schools should just drop athletics. Because year after year, they're hiring a coach. Coach comes in, they won't give them any resources, and they make it seem like it's the coach's fault. You can't win without resources. So if, you don't, if you're not going to win, don't play athletics. Mm -hmm. You got coaches' lives, student athletes' lives, the support staff's lives in your hands. If you're not going to support athletics, just drop it. Don't play like you want athletics. I think some schools need to look at that. Some HBCUs need to look at it. Vaughn not playing with them today. No, just, just, <laughs> Vaughn said some HBCUs, period. Right. Woo, Vaughn, woo, woo. Anything else you want to get off your chest? 